Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. And King of Floors, your vinyl, laminate, and engineered flooring superstore. Donnie and Dolly, a presentation of Able Auctions and our friends at King of Floors. We have some information about Able Auctions coming up in a matter of moments. Don't yeah. let me forget that, uh, Ryan. Meanwhile, it is a Monday, and all of our guests today, including Elliot Friedman, moments away, sponsored by Bassant Motors. It's the Canada Day sale at Bassant all month long. Great promos, lots of savings, and great deals. Check them out online at BassantMotors.com and follow them on Twitter at Passant Motors as we bring in from Hockey Night in Canada and Sportsnet and the 31 Thoughts podcast. He's a busy guy. Elliot Friedman, how are you, sir? I'm good, Donnie. How you doing, man? Very, very, very well. Very well. I'm looking at your Twitter account here. Hearing today that Chicago Edmonton closing in on a Duncan Keith uh, deal. What can you tell us about that, Elliot? Yeah, I think uh, there's a GM meeting going on right now, but I think we could see it done later this afternoon. I think that's possible. Um, I heard there was a lot of progress on the weekend. Um, and, you know, I don't know about salary retention. Um, I heard, the, I, look, I don't want anyone to report this as gospel, but uh, I don't know about salary retention. I just don't know if it is or isn't. But I, I think it's a player and a, and a pick. That's what I think it is. And I, I think it's possible the player is Caleb Jones, but I don't have that 100%. Does it make sense for Edmonton to grab Duncan Keith? They wanted him. Um, there's, there's no question about it. When it became available, uh, they were interested. But I think they had to find a deal that was comfortable for them. I think the uh, Chicago came in hot. They asked for guys like Ethan Bear and Ryan McLeod, and I think Edmonton was was not willing to do that. So it kind of uh, – they, I mean, they've been working at this, Don, I think for two weeks. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they were grinding away and grinding away, and Edmonton was saying no to a bunch of things. And I think it's, uh, it's, it sounds like they've finally gotten to a spot where they're all uh, comfortable uh, with. I had a call uh, earlier today that said that it was, you know, because of the GM meeting, things had to stop, but it was definitely moving along. As far as the Canucks go, Elliot, uh, any news on any progress regarding uh, Pedersen and Hughes? No, uh, like I said, I think, you know, Ian McIntyre reported last week from our place that uh, he thinks they're going to be both short-term deals. I, I think that's true. Um, you know, I like I said, I think we've all felt that, you know, Pedersen was going to come in around the Barzell range, and I still think that's true. I've had a di- more difficult time, uh, Donnie, pinning down what Hughes' number mm-hmm. is going to be. There simply aren't as many comparables. And um, so... And plus, also, I think the defensemen, you know, they're all kind of sitting there, uh, him, Haskinen, Dalene, uh, Kel McCarr. And it's almost like what, what one of them told me is that they're almost waiting for someone to go first, right? Yeah. So, and, and Hughes' situation's a little bit different because he's not offer sheet eligible. Like, none of those guys are ARB eligible, but the other ones are offer sheet eligible. So uh, it's a little trickier, but... I do believe it's short term. I, I've had a much more difficult time pinning down the number. Elliot, uh, Nate Schmidt, uh, can you give us uh, any sort of an update? What's going on there? Well, Dahlia, I, I think the news is out, as you reported last week, that um, they're they're considering moving them. Um, I, like, I don't necessarily believe there's a formal trade request here, but I think there's an understanding of last year was a rough year. Um, I, I'm not sure either side is 100% crazy about the fit. And, you know, they're going to look to see if they can potentially move him. Um, you know, last week I reported about Jacob Voracek. I think he's kind of in a similar situation. I think that, you know, Philly has said because of their cap situation, their expansion situation, they're going to uh, try to move him. But I, both Voracek and uh, Philadelphia are aware he could be back on their team next year. And so they're prepared for that. I think there's more of a desire in uh, Schmidt's case to move as opposed to stay. I think Voracek would be okay if he stayed. Um, I think there's more of a desire in Schmidt's case to move than there is to stay. And I think Vancouver's going to try it. 
and they're certainly making an effort. Like his name is definitely out there, hmm. but it's, it's, you know, anybody with term now, it's always a challenge just because of how flat the cap is. And I think there are some players out there both on the blue line and up front that teams will try to use their available space to chase. So that's going to make it harder. Elliot, uh, general feeling is uh, Jake Vertan is really high on the list uh, for the Canucks to buy out. Do you get that feeling as well? I do think so. I think, you know, people wait to the end at buyouts so they can see if, yeah. uh, first of all, A, do we need the space? Uh, B, do we need to leave someone uh, unprotected potentially? And C, um, you know, can we get something in return? And, um, you know, that's kind of where we are right now. Um, you know, we're kind of sitting there and, and waiting to see how that's going to happen. But I, I think that's the case. The other things I'm hearing on Vancouver is that they are looking out there. If you're going to move Schmidt and pending what happens with the likes of Edler and Hamannick, I, I definitely think they're looking at defensemen. And I think also they're looking for a center with some, a heft was the word I used, some size, uh, to them, and you know, I'm not necessarily looking for a plotter, but someone who's a bit bigger and can play potentially for that third line center role. That's I don't think they want to play Miller there. I think they prefer to have yeah. Miller up higher in the lineup as a wing. So I think they're looking at like that kind of a player to see if they can get one. Okay, talk about the Canucks adding it a defenseman. Uh, uh, tell me they're not still interested in Oliver Ekman Larson. I don't think so. Okay. I just don't see how that's going to fit. Yeah. Like, like, like I, I, don't, I don't see – like, Arizona would have to retain a lot of money for that to work. I, like, I just don't see how the math works on that one. I think they like Ekman Larson as a player. I just don't think they can make that contract work. I, I heard that the Canucks weren't really too deep into that. Of course, now we'll hang up and it'll happen like a second after I say that. But, no, I, I heard it was very unlikely that that was going to work. Is Johnny Guter on the verge of extending his time in Calgary? No, I, I wouldn't say that. I think they've begun conversations about it, but I, I don't think anything like that is, is imminent. Um, you know, it benefits the team right now more than, than Goudreau in the sense that Goudreau could wait and see what the market is on certain on some of the UFA wingers like, like Landeskog and those kinds of guys. But, um, uh, like, I think, you know, the team, obviously going into the last year of his contract, they have to start those conversations. Okay. Um, uh, the Olympics. Uh, um, what do you, what's your best bet when it comes to the NHL going there? My best bet is they're going to go mm -hmm. with the proviso that if the situation gets worse, like, for example, if we get a variant or something like that, yep. it, in the lead-up to the games, that there's an, a, an escape hatch. Um, you yeah. know, ever since the commissioner and Bill Daly made their comments, um, the, the players have spoken out publicly like uh, McDavid and Hedman did and privately in conversations with the Players Association to say that, you know, there's, more, there's vaccinations now. Um, we want to go. Like, you know, like all these athletes that are going to the Olympics right now, it's not the Olympics as we know them, Don. Yep. But to say that you're an Olympian, it's a big deal. That's the power of the Olympic Games. And the players want to go. Even though their families probably won't be going, even though they may not be allowed to do much in China, they want to go. They want to be Olympians. So I think they're gonna they're gonna work out a deal. But I think there'll be an escape hatch to say, okay, if things get worse in the in the in the months and days before the Olympics, okay, we can pull out. What a month it's going to be. Uh, we're gonna uh, we could go on and on with you, uh, Elliot. Thanks so much for this. Do you have something, Rick? Elliot, I, you're, Elliot, you you looking at your phone? You only asked me one question. Uh, no, on? no, I, Elliot. The usual. Elliot, you called me at nine o'clock on Saturday night. Elliot, do you ever sleep? Do you ever sleep? <laughs> no, not really. This this is not the time of year for sleep, unfortunately. Yeah. Hardest working man in the biz, Elliot. Yeah. Probably not a good idea to call Rick at 9 o'clock <laughs> on a Saturday, by the way. Elliot. No, I, I have to tell you, he was into the – I think he was into the crown pretty deep when I spoke to him. It was pretty uh, yeah, I was. But yeah. anyways – He that, is right now. Hey, always a pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> Thanks, Elliot. All right, guys. Have yourselves a great uh, week. Uh, uh, appreciate it.